Here's a short clip of an intellectual skeptic claiming that the Bible discourages rational inquiry and building of cities by providing his arguments from the stories of the Bible. Watch how Dr. Lennox wisely responds to his false assumption. You fashion yourself as a Christian scientist. My question is in reference to that. One of the main themes of the Old Testament is the discouragement of rational inquiry. This is evidenced by the Tower of Babel, the banishment of the uh, from the Garden of Eden, from eating of the Tree of Knowledge, and the disparaging of Cain's descendants from building cities, uh, for building of cities uh, and engaging in art and culture. Blind faith is rewarded and questioning is punished. Isn't your position that critical thinking is compatible with the Bible, an egregious twist of the book's actual message in order to conform to, to today's general consensus that science serves humanity's best interest? Okay. The claim is that the Old Testament discourages rational inquiry. That's the first time I've ever heard anybody say that. That's very interesting. I was intrigued on in what you based it, the story of Babel. Let me remind you that the Old Testament contains in several places the commandments of God. And the number one commandment is what? Love the Lord your God with all your mind. In fact, the foundation of taxonomy is biblical. Every academic discipline central to it is the naming of things. The fascinating thing about the story of Genesis is that God told human beings to name the animals. That's the beginning of biological taxonomy. God said, do it yourself. Get interested in the universe. And so to hear that the, the Bible is against rational inquiry when in fact it commands it, seems to me to be very curious. Now, the city of Babylon, and you were saying God is against the arts and the humanities and cities. He isn't. According to Scripture, there are two major cities in the Bible. One is Babel, and the other is Jerusalem, and they occur as a leitmotif right through the Bible, and you meet both of them at the end. Mystery Babylon, the great city, and the new Jerusalem. God is very interested in cities. Indeed, Abraham, the pioneer of the Hebrews, fascinatingly, he left the Babylonian city of Ur of the Chaldees. Why? God said, I have prepared for you a city. God isn't against cities. But what God is against is what Babylon represented. And what did it represent? Babylon represented the attempt to forge a universal unity without God. Let us make a name for ourselves, and let us build a city and a tower that it might reach to heaven. This is a profound analysis of where humanity goes wrong. Now, I don't want to dwell on this, but it enters into philosophy and literature at every corner. There are basically two philosophies of life. One is that human beings create themselves. Have you noticed the cities in the world competing for the largest building? It started in Babel. It is a symbol, of course. It is a symbol of pride. God wasn't against the cities, but that idea that we create our own meaning and significance is the idea that needs to be analyzed. And the very interesting thing is that standing against that, Abraham was called out and God said to him, I will make your name great. And ladies and gentlemen, if I might turn it into a slight parable, it seems to me that we're either living for the one city or the other. We're either restlessly trying to create our own image, our own city, our own values, or we've learned to trust God for our significance. Now, it seems to me in that apposition, it's not anti-intellectualism. It's a question of how we use the intellect. And I would refute completely any idea that the Bible is anti-intellectual. In fact, the Tower of Babel is proven to be historical. Professor of Assyriology Donald J. Wiseman at the University of London has confidently stated that the record in Genesis 11 bears all the marks of a reliable historical account. Language studies have led many scholars to the conclusion that the varied human tongues ultimately can be traced to a common source. Hence, the Bible stories has not been studied and found wanting. For many readers, it has been found difficult and left unstudied. Thanks for watching. God bless you.